everybody welcome back to the cabin it's so interesting to me managing a forest for different reasons different purposes and different sections and how each one is so unique so this is my maple sugar bush that we're standing in right now which is where the workshop is I think you can see it in the camera there and it's uh this was land that was granted 150 years ago and it was cleared and used as potential farmland or the tempted farmland back then which failed very quickly from what I understand I found an old horseshoe in the woods when I was digging to build a garden and uh, I don't know how old that would have been but I don't think there would have been animals on this land for I don't even know see I don't know some of these trees look like they're out of these beaches I gotta do a, a ring count problem is most of them are dead from the inside out so they're hollow so I can't count rings but I would say 60 80 90 maybe 100 years some of these trees and then the uh, majority of the smaller ones are probably 50 60 70 years old but um, the reason it would have been abandoned is that it's not good farmland it's useless for growing crops I mean it's all rolling rocky shallow soils very acidic so this would have been just uh, would have had cattle on it I would imagine or horses back then so I'm using it as a sugar bush now um, majority of the trees are not really ideal at this size for tapping but I'm doing it anyway but uh, I run the risk of impacting the health long-term health of the trees by tapping them too young so I'm trying to encourage then the bigger ones to get bigger now this tree behind me is one of the better ones it's nice and straight, tall, uh, starting to get some girth on it, but it's crowded. So you can see that that uh, yellow birch right there. It's getting high enough that it's impacting the canopy so the maple staying upright instead of spreading its limbs out. And this beech right here is growing into it as well. These beeches are all dying. If they're not already dead, they're very close to dying. And they're... Uh, but they still have leaves on at least half of them so it is shading out the trees so it's preventing them the other trees the maple trees in this case from growing to their full potential yet it's just taking up space now it is good wildlife habitat some of these are hollow enough that there's flying squirrels in them and woodpeckers and so on there's an owl nest up here which i'm not touching any of the trees that i know there's wildlife in but it's going to tumble at some point and it'll be dangerous with me being in this bush all the time so that'll come down, I'll probably thin out. Well, that yellow birch right there, it's not long lived, or it's not going to live long. It's not to optimal. You can see it's got the tops broken off. There's a double trunk and then a split at the bottom. So maybe it'll last 10, 20 years, but it's not going to be a healthy tree and it's going to eventually just get diseased and fall over. So I'm going to take that out, take these little ones out. I'm going to free up this tree, so the free up the canopy as well as the competition down in the root level by killing off these or removing these trees that are that are crowding it so that girth that tree even if, if i do it now that tree will start to grow out wider even this year the uh, branch tips the twigs will end up spreading and growing a lot faster with all that extra sunlight moisture and nutrients so freeing that one up got an oak that's split over there and it's the thing about oaks they're strong so that one might stay like that for 40 or 50 years but it I'm taking a chance by leaving it because it is split and it could split further what I could do is strap it together to hold that section up there together so that it starts growing and form and getting tighter and stronger together but anyway um, lots of little things to get rid of I got rid of three major dying trees so two beeches and one yellow birch which made the majority of that clearing then I just took out some of the smaller stuff that's going to be in my way for building so it's ended up being a fair size clearing despite the fact that I only took out three mature trees so it's going to change quite a bit all that extra sunlight's going to come in this northern perimeter especially all these smaller trees will start growing all the bigger trees that I'm keeping will start growing in, in uh, width actually there's another maple here that's leaning it's trying to get away from this beach and it is 
not very strong because it's not getting much sunlight up there. So if I free up or get rid of the speech, get rid of these yellow birches in front of it, that's going to start growing and hopefully straighten out if I don't destroy it when I drop this beech. And I have to take the beech now. I can't wait for it to die because it's leaning towards the buildings. So it has to come out. But that's what I'm doing. I'm, this section of the woods, I'm, I'm managing for maple, for syrup, for maple sugar. And then the other sections, as you see, I'm uh, managing some sections for softwood lumber. So for pine, spruce, some fir, hemlock, and things like that. And then I've got the wildlife section that I'm uh, planting food for wildlife, which is making a clearing, cutting down some of the aspens that are at their that are at their age that they're dying, cut them off, let the root sprouts come up and feed the moose and the deer, and then having the clearings where I plant some stuff for the wildlife. And then I have a bunch of uh, nut trees, oak, hickory several different species of oak, uh, hazelnut bushes, something else that I'm forgetting, and then a bunch of fruit trees as well. So that will go into the wildlife clearings throughout the property. And then I have my food production gardens for myself, which is two one quarter acre parcels, clearings that I've made. So they're orchard fruit, uh, vegetables and, and so on. So yeah, it's a lifetime project. It's gonna be something I work on continuously every year all year long and um, I you know I love seeing the the forest change and improve as um, as I do these things so yeah anyway I got to clean up this mess so it's the problem all these trees and branches that are down I need to cut them up into firewood and you know do some chipping get some wood chips for the paths and for the garden so it's going to take a long time basically all year to <laughs> clean it up so today I'll see how far I get on it <laughs> you gonna help me dig? Careful.